Ah, the things that children will do when their parents are not around. Do you know that verse that says, a child left to itself will bring its mother to shame? That is so true. Welcome down the rabbit hole, friends. We are here. We're finally here at episode four, the finale of the docu-series, the Duggar docu-series, Shiny Happy People. Guys, my house is like a tornado right now. If you're not aware, if you haven't watched me for a long time, I'm in the process of moving from Malaysia to the United States for my husband's job. We've moved, I don't know, five times in the past seven years, and it is exhausting. I'm exhausted, I'm done, I'm tired, and doing these videos is kind of like the break that I get when I'm just done with the packing and the moving. So I'm not gonna talk much more about that, but let's get into it. We're here to discuss the finale, but we're also going to talk about Jim Bob and Michelle's response to the docuseries. Guys, I looked it up last night. And usually um, I'm not, I have to say, I'm not very like emotional about a lot of what goes on with the Duggars. But when I read the response that Jim, Bob and Michelle had last night, I, I'm ashamed to say I literally was crying through it. I have so much to say about it and I would love to hear your comments and your opinions below in the comment area because, you know, I like to hear what other people have to say. I want to know what other people are thinking and feeling about this family. All right, so here we go. So what are you here for? We're part of a specialized task force, and that task force is called the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Yep. Based on an ongoing investigation, we were able to get from this IP address uh, one specific video of child pornography. So we all know that a few years ago, federal agents showed up at Josh Duggar's car lot and they were like, look, we are here because someone has been downloading CSAM on these computers and we need to figure out who it is. The Duggars immediately went into cover it up mode. Um, there were news reports that this had happened, but the Duggars released a statement saying that they were totally unaware of any investigation against their family member. And it kind of went away for a period of time. Time. Many of us weren't sure what was going on, but in the back streets of Reddit, everyone was talking about the rumors about Josh Duggar. And one folder containing approximately 65 images of child pornography. Deanna lets us know that even within the family, it was hush hush, cover it up. Dale investigating a business associated with Josh Duggar. I talked to my brother and he said it's just this ex-con that worked at his car lot and it's all going to be. From Jill, we find out that, you know, they're pretty shocked and they're finding out a lot of information from the news, but they're being told by Jim, Bob and Michelle that everything is fine, not to worry about it. This is all a lie. Maybe there's someone who's like an ex-con at the dealership who is doing something inappropriate, but it doesn't involve Josh. But then, of course, outsiders, the rest of us, we saw the Duggar family crowd around Josh and Anna close the car lot down, move that family like on to the Duggar property, latch up the gates <laughs> and basically ensure that Anna and Josh were completely confined within their little Duggar kingdom in Arkansas, right? So it looked like something was happening where the Duggars felt that they needed to protect Josh and Anna. The son showed up at our door and they were like, so is it true that your brother's about to be arrested? And I was like, I don't want to comment on that. Okay, we all know what happened with Josh Duggar's trial. I've done countless videos about it. Feel free to go back and look at the videos where I discuss like the transcripts from the trial. I read transcripts from Sojo Files YouTube channel. She does a great job with all the information from the trial as well. But we all know Josh Duggar was found guilty. In the news, I said, I think we're living in the twilight zone. Josh Duggar indicted for downloading and possessing child pornography. And I personally believe that what was brought forth in the trial was irrefutable evidence that Josh was at the car lot when the material was being downloaded. The YouTube channel Without a Crystal Ball, Katie Joy was saying we were going to hear a lot from the halts in this documentary, but I haven't seen them that much. Um, they do appear in this final episode. We get to hear about how Homeland Security actually came to the home of the halts, Jim and Bobby Halt, Bobby A to talk to them about their past with Josh because now they were investigating like the current situation, but they want to know what had happened in the past with this guy. Bobby says, Jim, we have company, it's Homeland Security. They sit down and say, Mr. Holt, I'm sure you know why we're here. He starts talking, he goes, well, it's about Josh Duggar. 
And this is where the Holtz, you know, they really contributed to the investigative process before Josh ever even went to trial. They were the ones who were able to be honest about like, this is what happened with Josh in the past. I'm sure Jim Bob was over there like, we're not talking to anybody. We're lawyering up. And if we do talk about it, what I'm going to say is I don't remember anything. They said it wasn't about um, his past history. It was something different. You know, so the Halts, whatever you may think about them, and I do have an extensive collection of videos on who the Halts are if you want to go back and take a look, whatever you may think about them, and I will be making a video about what's going on currently um, with restraining orders having to do with Jim. But <clears throat> for now, all I want to say is that whatever you may think about them, I do believe that Bob Yay. Bobby, Bob Yeh, um, did a great service to the Duggar girls. Instead of having to have someone like Jill come into the courtroom and publicly testify against her brother, Bobby took it upon herself to give her testimony, which helped put Josh Duggar in jail. I texted Josh and I just said, hey, I'm hearing rumors, is that even true? And he's like, absolutely not, Like, especially if something of that nature. You know, the one thing that I really love about the documentary is we're hearing like straight from the horse's mouth. We hear from Derek, like he literally texted Josh after this whole thing went down. So they're in contact. It's not just like people aren't asking Josh. So Derek says like, I asked Josh, like, what's going on? Is this true? And Josh responds, absolutely not. Especially nothing of that nature I would ever get involved in. And you're just looking at it like, Josh, you think that we should think that nothing of that nature you would ever get involved in? Like, you think we don't? It's like some sort of fantasy world that Josh Duggar and the people who really support him are living in. This man has a problem. He has an addiction to pee and possibly to other things as well. I don't know everything that's going on, but there's an addictive problem with his personality. And he has severely inappropriate boundaries with women that's not going away you know even if he's given the correct treatment it's something that needs to be worked on and kept in check for the rest of his life so when something like this comes up nobody's gonna be like what josh josh no not that guy josh we everybody is aware of what you've done who you are what you're capable of it's just so interesting to me to hear Derek kind of be like, I, I texted him, like, what would happen? And he was like, no, no, Derek, no, Jill, we don't, I'm not coming down on anyone, but I'm just saying like, nobody in that family should be trusting this guy. He he can't earn back trust. Um, on the day that a family statement's put out, we know that the family had knowledge that there's a child pornography investigation against Josh. And they had that knowledge on the same day that they made the statement. Yeah, I mean, I think you can provide forgiveness for people. And you guys know, many of you who have been here long term know that I worked um, extensively in a child S offender facility. Pe children that are under 18 who have committed crimes against other children. And so I have a background in all of this. And forgiveness is a part of the therapy that's done with these kids. And once again, go back and check out my other videos where I explain it extensively. But there is therapy that has been shown to work incredibly well for children under the age of 18. Now, adults, it's a different matter. When it comes to Josh Duggar, he has shown time and time again that he cannot be trusted. I understand forgiving someone who you really love. I do believe in forgiveness, but you don't forget. And you are you need to be like, mama don't raise no fool. You know, when you deal with someone like this, you don't ever fully trust them again flat out. So it's just interesting to me to see the behind the scenes of like people in the Duggar family like Derek or even why would you even text Josh and be like did you do this? Like can't even <laughs> whatever he says is like Psh. nothing that he says matters at this point. You've got to look at the evidence from the neutral people around him either the people that are investigating or people that worked with him or whatever's going on in the family. I mean you just can't trust this guy anymore. Yeah you might have fooled the public but like Eventually, if there's something to this, people are going to realize it. I think we were curious to just see how everything unfolded and to get the truth. 
Okay, so Jill and Derek are also going to let us know that, of course, behind the scenes, it's like Jim Bob is already working on trying to wrap this up, cover it up. Um, he's putting out statements that don't make any sense, saying no, that Josh is being investigated, and they're telling all of us there's no investigation going on. But, you know, they're try they're hoping beyond hope that nothing's going to come of this, and it will be swept under the rug. And I don't, I, I do believe there's horrible enmeshment and entanglement between Josh and his parents, but I also think that Michelle and Jim Bob were of a mindset of wanting to protect Anna and their grandchildren, Josh's children as well. It wasn't all just about Josh. But of course, they were again misled because keeping Josh in a home with his children when he's looking up CSAM was the opposite of <laughs> a good response to trying to help your grandchildren, Michelle and Jim Bob, but you know, they're living on a different planet from many of us. They're living in Duggar world, Duggar universe. And it's a scary place. It seems like the entire Fundy Snark community obviously had a vested interest in this story and I followed it very closely. Okay. And then we hear Jen from Fundy Fridays who did an amazing job in this documentary and she has amazing videos on her YouTube channel. If you want to learn about the Duggars, she's the number one person to go to. Okay, she talks about the Duggar subreddit. That's, you know, the Reddit that I'm a part of where I really started to learn so much about the background of the Duggar family. It can get kind of snarky and um, I don't agree with everything on the page, but it's an interesting place to go and find out information about what's really going on within um, this community of people. And Jen kind of introduces us to it and talks about the interest that was there and the fact that there's actually a lot of people from the community who get onto this subreddit page and give information. They provide like asking anything. They talk about stuff that goes on, um, their perspective on the family. So that's where a lot of information that you've seen come out in tabloids has come from. Internet Eyes makes reports of all the websites you've been on and it sends them to a trusted accountability buddy. Jen also talks about the computer program, Covenant Eyes. It's been used extensively by the Duggar family, and it's been touted by them as being a great program to have on your computer for your family. It watches and checks like everything that you're doing. And I know that many people within the IBLP community say that they use it. And basically, during the trial, we found out that there were really like... And fairly simplistic ways to go around this system and that Josh was heavily aware of how to do it. Covenant Eyes makes reports of all the websites you've been on and it sends them to a trusted accountability buddy. But one of the interesting things that we realized during the trial about Covenant Eyes is that all of the information from Covenant, Covenant Eyes, everything that it would get off of Josh's computer had to be sent to an accountability buddy and that that person was Anna Duggar, the person who's been in charge of like wash, watching and babysitting her husband, who also within the structure of the IBLP has no power over what her husband is doing. So it was a little bit sad and silly to figure that all out. You sometimes feel like you failed. Could we have tried more? Okay, now here come the Halts to talk about their role in Josh's life. And they're going to let us know that they feel like they tried really hard to get help for Josh, to stand up about what was going on in the Duggar home. Now, I it's very complicated what happened with the Halts. I've done extensive videos about it. They are neither all good nor all bad. Nothing is black and white in this world, and they are certainly not black and white. Um, they've given interviews on Sojo Files. I talk about that in one of my videos. I, I don't know if Sojo Files still has the interview up. Um, but I have a lot of positive thoughts about Bobby Holt. Um, maybe I'll do another video in the future to kind of go through all of this. But once again, it, it does bother me when people demonize these um, families or individuals who are around the Duggar family, like even the Duggar family. I, I can't demonize any of these people. They've done good things. They've done bad things. Bobby seems to want to make things right. I know that during the trial, she reconnected with Jill, and I believe she also reconnected with Joy. Uh, within the Fundy Snark community and also um, through Sojo Files community and her YouTube page, 
that a lot of good things have been said about Bobby as a person. Um, I also follow her and many of her children in social media, and they all seem like very loving and kind people. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot to be said one way or another about this family, but they're going to let us know what they have to say in this documentary. When it's a friend doing things that are so vile and so wicked, that part really hurts. That's why I cry. Now, I do think that Bobby has a tone of like, oh, this was so sad for me. This was so hard on our family. Um, but of course, me coming from my perspective, I'm just like, you know who it was really hard on? It's like, it was hard on Jill. It was hard on uh, Jessa. The girls that were actually like truly affected and living with this every day um, really should be the focus of everyone. They seemed like such good people. The sweetest family, the way the show portrayed them was perfect. And here's where I want to break in and say that I don't believe that Jim Bob and Michelle Duggar are all good or all bad either. Okay. I truly believe that of the Fundy families, of the IBLP families featured in this documentary, it seems as though Jim Bob and Michelle were one of the few families who were providing their kids with like um, a financially stable household, uh, giving them opportunities and freedom outside of the household that a lot of the other families in the IBLP weren't participating in. So there were a lot of really shitty awful, horrible things going on there. And there were also a lot of opportunities being given to these kids that weren't given to other people. I believe deep down, you know, you guys can, um, I'm sure many people will be upset with me for saying this, but I truly believe that Michelle and Jim Bob wanted, they ultimately wanted to be good parents. I believe that they, especially Michelle, put a lot of effort into trying to be the best parent she could with 19 effing children. Like, how great of a parent can you be? Um, you know, as a mother myself who's made a lot of mistakes in my life, and I want so badly to give my kids everything, like, I know it's hard. So they have made huge mistakes. And the biggest mistake of all really comes, for me, it comes at the end of all of these shenanigans, all of the horrible things that happen. It comes right now in this moment when they could make a turnaround and say like, okay, I'm listening to all of you. We've made mistakes. This is the time when they could say, we made a lot of mistakes. We did something wrong. We're ready to make some changes. We're ready to come forward and acknowledge our mistakes. And the fact that they're not really doing that is where I really do feel comfortable condemning them. But when Bob Bobby says, like, they seemed like very good people. Yeah. I mean, I believe that they wanted to be good people. I believe that they wanted to do the right things. I believe that Jim Bob, more than Josh, or probably more than any of the male kids in the family, really believes in Bill Gothard and the IBLP. I think he does what he does because he truly believes this is the best way to be my opinion. Let me know what you think below. I'm open to having a conversation about this for sure. And I would love to do a live in which we kind of chat back and forth about um, Jim, Bob and Michelle. That they really did just have to put a face on. They have to be happy all the time. They can never show real emotion. I do want to say that I don't think Bobby is being super upfront and maybe it's just how it was edited. Like they only have a small part in the series, but I don't think Bobby's really expressing how close the families were. They were close. Like Bobby knew, Bobby and Jim really knew Jim, Bob and Michelle pretty well. So they can't really make all these claims of like, I guess they just weren't who we thought they were. Like you guys were fairly close and your children were close as well. I took the stand and I really felt like it was important to acknowledge to everyone in the room and everyone that might hear this that God knows that I'm going to tell the truth and I have to stand before him one day. This part of the documentary talks about Bobby taking the stand and Jill says like they got what they needed from someone else, Bobby, so I didn't have to testify. I'm proud of Bobby for getting up there. I think she was very, it seemed like she was very honest on the stand, more honest than I've seen her as, as I said, it could just be edited out, but you get a lot more information from her testimony on the stand that you're not seeing in this documentary. Please check out my prior videos where I read the testimony. 
Bobby Holt was exposing everybody because she was saying everybody knew this was an open secret. Josh had molested several of his sisters and they swept it under the rug. I do think it must have been really hard for Bobby to get up there and talk about everything because her daughter, her own daughter, Kaylee Holt, was heavily um, spoken about in the courtroom. And that I'm sure was not something that she wanted to bring upon her daughter. I do follow um, Kaylee on social media. She has a husband, children, and a seemingly like beautiful life right now. Um, and Kaylee spoke out and said, like, it's really hard for me. I feel sad that this person that I cared about that was my friend as a child, his life has come to this kind of conclusion, and I'm very sad for him. And one thing that we really learned from Bobby and Jen from Fundy Fridays brings it up is we learned that like everybody knew about it in the community, the people in the church, they were aware that Josh got sent away. They were aware of bits and pieces of what happened. The Holt family was highly aware. People were, you know, talking to Jim Bob about it and disagreeing with, you know, his decisions about how to treat Josh. So it wasn't as though it was just completely kept in the family as a secret. People knew what was going on. Check out my video about how Josh Duggar actually got exposed. The truth about Josh Duggar got exposed by a lesbian couple who were part of um, the, the community in Springdale, Arkansas, who had no other like uh, connections to the family except that they didn't like <laughs> that the Duggars were speaking out against same-sex marriage. And they ended up doing an interview with In Touch, and they're like, everybody in this community knows Josh Duggar did inappropriate things to his sisters and in touch was like what everybody here knows that nobody knows it out in the public so it's crazy to think about how everything went down karma karma i absolutely believe karma is real and it took a long time for things to come to fruition the way that um it needed to happen so that josh did receive some kind of consequence for everything but i mean it's going to come down to all, for all of us, karma is a reality. At one point, Jim Bob told you you were jealous. He said, Jim Bob, I would not trade places with you for a bazillion dollars. Okay, Jim Bob reminds me of like a petulant child because uh, Bobby lets us know that Jim Bob basically, whenever anyone would stand up against him and talk about like, I think something's wrong here, Jim Bob basically came to Jim Holt and said, I think you're jealous of me. <laughs> Sorry, I just, I hear what you're saying, but I think all I hear is jealous, 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 jelly, jelly, jelly. I mean, that's just ridiculous. No one, there's not a person in the world who would take money <laughs> over like having a child, having your oldest child inappropriately touch his siblings and do more than that. I'm not going into it. I mean, that's, I will forever pity the Duggar family because of what happened. You know, it's so awful and terrible and sad that Jim Bob and Michelle don't understand the full breadth of what their son has done, even before the CSAM charges. You know, there's they're nothing to admire or be jealous of. You were the parts of like the old stuff being brought up that should have never been out there. I just hope and pray that this never happens to anyone else ever again. Jill pops in again, just again, letting us know like she's tired of the old stuff, the old stuff that happened to her being brought up in public. She doesn't want that to happen. That's, that's really a big part of her platform in this. It's like, you know, she's very angry that that was brought out into the public arena. And sent you his website with the donation page. Yeah. yeah. The news of Duggar's candidacy comes amid a federal child porn investigation against his son. I got a news alert on my phone and I was like... Okay, and then one of the last topics that's brought up in the documentary is the fact that Jim Bob Duggar went ahead and tried to run for office, political office, while his son was under investigation and getting ready to go to trial for downloading CSAM. Obviously, it's crazy, it's ridiculous, and there's one thing that, there's a couple things that I have to say about it. First, I just want to mention, because this never gets brought up, and I'm sure I'll be criticized for it, but I do want to say, my grandparents raised me, so they were older um, when they were taking care of me and I think they were in their like late sixties. And I do want to say <laughs> that it's become clear to me 
um, throughout my life and as I've gotten older and they've passed away and everything, that they were different people. Their brains had changed significantly through the years. They were different people in their 40s than they were in their 60s and then in their 70s and 80s. They were so different. The way that they interacted with people, the way they um, were more angry about different things. I mean, I could just go into it. So I have a lot of questions about where Jim Bob is in his own like mental health journey. And also just like that people, um, they just become different as they get older. Okay. I'm not saying that as an excuse for what Jim Bob does, but when I look at Michelle and Jim Bob, like they're older people, they're older parents. They have <laughs> freaking 19 kids. They're still raising some of them. Um, it takes a toll on your body and your mind, even though Jim Bob was not super involved with all the raising. I mean, there's just, there's some deter. I I'm going to come out and say it allegedly, according to what I, my opinion on the subject, I'm sure there's some deterioration in the brains of Michelle and Jim Bob. Um, and I just wonder if that contributes a little bit to some of what goes on with them, because for sure, Jim Bob seems to be living in some kind of crazy, um, fantasy world where control is of utmost importance to him. Like I can see him being the kind of person and my grandfather became like this. I know it's different, but like he always has to have his toothbrush a certain way in a certain place and has to be exactly the same way. And he can't go traveling anymore because he has to sleep in his bed the right way. Like things just become more difficult to like think outside of the box or change your opinions, even if they were able to do those things like 15 years prior. So there's some, when I look at people like Jim Bob, he's not the only one, uh, public people, and they're older. I do kind of think about these things sometimes. So that's what's going on. We also have with Jim Bob, like he's kind of an ego maniac. And I do think that the IBLP, its teachings, its doctrine, and the fact that they got on the show heavily contributed to that. And that's a big problem with Jim Bob. So even Jill on the documentary is like, we found out he was running for this political office, like from the news, basically. Um, yeah, and it seemed crazy. And it was crazy. And he didn't win. But the point of it all was maybe not to win. It's sort of to like continuously bring their doctrine, their thoughts, their ideas about the political arena to the forefront, and to hope that the next generation, maybe their kids, will also be willing and able to become active in politics as well. And that's part of what the IBLP's goal was all along. So, um, I mean, they're saying that Jim Bob is still a participant in all of that. But that is basically the embodiment of a fundamentalist dad. Duggar said in a news release today that he is running because of what he called out of control bureaucrats. We heard uh, reports of conspiracy theories. Um, someone did message me about the Alert Academy. I talked about this before and said, like, I kind of feel, feel secondhand embarrassment whenever I see these boys from the IBLP, like, participating in the Alert Academy. And this person had to say, like, the Alert Academy was a very, like, difficult, almost abusive camp that these boys went to. Um, so let's not make light of it. And I do want to say that, uh, of course, like, I think it's... A terrible situation if these boys were being mistreated um, within the academy and there have been some accusations about that but I do think I do stand by um, what I said about the fact that as the kids get older what we've seen in the Duggar children is that they take a lot of these experiences from Alert Academy and kind of assume that they're like a paramilitary force um, we saw what happened when they flew down um, south, try, saying that they were going to help uh, with some natural disasters, and all of the reports about what they did there were it was that they were in the way. They were doing things that were not helpful in any way, shape, or form, and they were taking advantage of people around them and making it worse. So I do stand by the fact that like uh, the outcome of attending a camp like this is kind of instilling these people uh, with some sort of idea that they have training that's on par with whatever the United States government is doing in our military and armed forces. And I don't think that that's necessarily true. The very end of the documentary is about discussing the Joshua generation. In the world as strong arrows to have an impact on the world. I 
have to say that I don't fully understand the Joshua generation. It sounds like a weird pipe dream that doesn't make sense. Although, gosh, I could tell you some stories about some guys I dated. The Joshua generation is, is one of the most ambitious plots of modern evangelical history. And almost no one has ever heard of it. In Washington, D.C., some political <laughs> figures back in the day when I, you know, was in my prime. <laughs> some guys that I dated that uh, were a little bit off the rails. Um, and I am a very liberal person, but I dated, I don't know, I was dating some, okay, let's not, <laughs> let's go. I'm going to cut this from the video. All right, so I'm not really sure what's going on with the Joshua generation. It's an idea that generationally, um, the IBLP fundamentalist families are going to pass down this movement to get into the political arena and create some kind of a force, an entangled force that will work together to accomplish um, certain goals that they have. Of the Christian homeschool movement to assume positions of power and influence in government and in the law. The Christian homeschool movement is also like very tied up into this. There's so much I could say. <laughs> about this guy I dated. <laughs> you guys, people, I mean, it's just like, I just want to say, okay, let me just say this. Stuff that goes on in politics in DC, from my point of view, someone who's not been involved except as like an accessory at parties and stuff like that, all I want to say about it <laughs> is that it's all a bunch of puppeteering. Like, there's all these wealthy families. It doesn't matter if you're Republican or Democrat or whatever. Like, there's all these wealthy families. They invest in getting done what they want done. They use all these little people, my opinion. They use all these little people, all of us. Um, people who don't have generational wealth, aren't multi-billionaires, they infuse their money into things like, let's get all these homeschool kids to think they're going to actually accomplish this or that. And it's all a big farcical play on the stage of life. Just my opinion. Leave me a comment below about what you think. Hawthorne addressing a new round of allegations. Hawthorne was aggressive, misogynistic, and predatory. Okay, so I didn't know anything about Madison Hawthorne. Now, I've been away from the United States for several years now, so I don't always see, like, the everyday news broadcasting, but I was unaware of what happened with him, and the documentary goes into um, his situation. So they use him as an example of, you know, someone who's a part of this movement can oftentimes be, like, aggressive, inappropriate, not have good boundaries with women around him because he's been raised to kind of believe that he he is the shit. Like, let's just be honest. It's about like, he's the shit. He's the prophet. And we're all the mercies. Remember that from prior episodes. Um, so this is someone that I'm going to look into more because I don't know very much about the situation except what's being talked about in the documentary. But look for a video about him coming up. I feel like they're kind of likening Jed Duggar to Madison. I'm not sure. But Jed is someone who's run for office. I made a video on this before and my feelings towards Jed Duggar... Oh, I have so much to say. I, there's so much I have to say. I can't put it in this video. But, um, you know, I did not like that Jed uh, went on his sister, Jill Duggar's uh, social media accounts and liked some negative comments that people were making towards her. But I have found out so much more about that situation and I will be putting out a video about it. The bottom line is, it is clear to me that the Duggar family, you know, wants to remain active in politics if they can get someone into some kind of um, representative spot in the House of Congress or eventually even nationally, that would be like a dream for them. I think that that was the ultimate goal all along for the Duggar family. Yeah, now you have influencer culture. You have the rise of Christian influencers. The documentary goes on to talk about Christian influencing and how that's become a big thing um, on social media. And it looks at Paul and Morgan, who there are so many great videos done about that couple. And Fundy Fridays has amazing uh, video reviews about their social media. So go check that out if you get a chance. They're very much passing it down and making it cool and trendy. Same book, different cover. 
Paul and Morgan are a very popular young Christian couple who go on social media and make a lot of money putting out videos about their lifestyle. They recently had a child and um, many people are snarking about them in the Reddit community. A lot of people have harsh criticism towards this couple and they feel like it's a rebirth of the whole TLC Duggar 19 Kids accounting just on social media for how to speak femininely. I'll see mainstream Christians posting the umbrella of authority. After all that, we're back to Josh and they just go over the fact that justice was served by the verdict against um, Josh. I don't think justice has been fully served at all. Justice has been served. Within that family and towards Josh, um, but that's my own opinion um, because it's not just about what the government does. There's, he needs to face dire consequences from people who have supported him long term. And that includes his wife and his parents. So my parents had signed for a bunch of the kids who were no longer minors, including myself. Jill goes on to question more about the contracts um, that were signed with TLC, and she basically gives us some information that she thinks her mom signed the contract for her and possibly other people in the family after they were 18 years old, and that that was essentially illegal. It's inappropriate. It's not what you're supposed to do. She should have been given the option to sign it herself. And she is, you know, there's a lot of concerns about what was going on with these contracts. Anna, 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 Anna Duggar. I've made videos about this girl before. God, I'm going to put together a video for you soon about her again, because there's so much to say about this woman and um, what she's been through, how she's been raised, her responses to all of it. I have so much sympathy, empathy for her. And I also want to kick her in the butt and be like, girl, let's. We all out here know that somebody like that would find resources. She'd have a book deal so fast, but she doesn't know that. She probably doesn't know the truth of her situation. Pick you up by your bootstraps. You're strong enough. You got to get up and you got to change your stubborn mindset because a lot of people have said that Anna is not meek. Um, she's choosing to side in a certain way with people around her. But let's pick her up by her bootstraps and say, girl, let's get you out of here. Let's change the course of your life, the course of your children's lives. And there's so much to say about this girl. Tia Levings. She is amazing. She's on Facebook um, and she is featured heavily within the documentary because she's someone who is a victim She's a victim as a wife and mother of the teachings of the IBLP. She alleges that she was physically and verbally and emotionally horribly abused by her husband who followed the IBLP teachings and it was really hard for her to leave and she left and she's made a totally different life for herself. So she kind of steps in to give us a perspective of someone who's been there, who's done that, who's lived it and um, is here to tell us like, there is life after living like this. If of, you're too happy, something's wrong. In October of 2007, my husband followed me around the house for four hours with a length of firewood, promising to bludgeon me to death. Then the crux of what the documentary could have really been about was the fact that Bill Gothard has so many lawsuits against him for alleged sexual inappropriate conduct with young girls. I mean, really, they could make a whole other documentary about all of this. Bill Gothard had a lot of money and it came from families like the Duggars. He was able to fight these lawsuits in court and basically settle with people or get things thrown out. People didn't have the money to fight up against him. And it's clear that power and money went to his head. He used it inappropriately. He was teaching and filtering down through all of these families, the idea that you should be sexually pure at all times. And he was anything but that. It's not really all that surprising. We see it in different kinds of organizations <laughs> throughout the world. When someone has absolute power and they're given a big boost to their ego, they use it in inappropriate ways. IBLP as an organization knew and chose to look the other way. I was very aware of the lawsuit when it popped up against Bill Gothard. 
what people who were victimized by Bill Gothard, specifically people like Lindsay and Emily who appear in this documentary, what they say needs to be heard um, through their own voice. I definitely, if you're going to watch any part of the documentary on Amazon, the fourth episode is the one to watch for sure, because I really am grateful to hear from them specifically what happened to them and how it affected them in their lives. But the gist of all of it, what it comes down to is Bill Gothard was a huge power hungry egotistical creep at the time i felt that i would be in danger so i joined the lawsuit we he used this organization to get money and recruit people around him he could use and abuse allegedly and that's what this was all about. And people like the Duggar families, they were kind of propping it all up, propagating the ongoing machinery to keep young girls coming in and out of these camps and at the headquarters. We know that several people from Anna's family and the Duggars family have gone to work at headquarters for periods of time. Many of the people who appear in this documentary, they had to go through a whole process of deconstruction when it comes to leaving their faith. Becoming the person that I wanted to be now is a big step in my deconstruction. Changing the way that they're doing things and maybe even like separating themselves and putting some boundaries up with their family. It's not an easy process to go through. I think most of us are aware of that. And I would recommend checking out Suzanne Tickmeyer's um, YouTube page if you want to hear more about her process of deconstruction as a mother who was living this kind of quiverful lifestyle and eventually realized it wasn't right for herself and her family. If you were an ATI or IBLP, unfortunately, a lot of times you have to go through hell because it's not until then that you would risk everything to like get out of those situations. Deconstruction was obviously really difficult for a lot of people featured in the documentary, but they do make us aware that there are organizations and people that are ready and willing to help those who want to leave the IBLP. It turns out, as much as they try to control us, we were ultimately what they most feared, and all we had to do was talk. So I decided I'd use my TikTok. Young quiverful mom. The people who appear on this documentary that are not part of the Duggar family, a big part of why they wanted to do it is because they wanted to speak out and say what you saw on TLC on the Duggar show is not an accurate or true portrayal of what was going on behind the scenes with people and families who lived under this doctrine. Please hear our voices. Like, let us tell you what's been going on within our own families, within our own lives. Please listen. And I'm so glad that this documentary was made. I think they did an amazing job um, sharing what they could in a very short period of time. It's four episodes long and there's so much more that they could talk about, many um, deeper dives that they could do, but they are but they are limited not only by time but by what the public is ready for at this point in time i know that the director and producers have said that they would love to go forward with further documentaries about this topic and other topics i would be looking forward to it and i can't wait to get jill's book in january Okay, guys, we've reached the end, and this is kind of a speed, quick, um, a fast, down and dirty of that last episode. Many of you have expressed to me that you can't watch the episodes. You may live in other countries like Canada, and you don't have access to it yet. Um, I do want to let you know that you can always download what's called a VPN. I don't know that much about it, but because I live in Malaysia, um, I have used it at times, and you know, just I don't know, type it into Google <laughs> or ask someone, ask a friend how to put it on. I always have to ask my husband how to do these things. Um, but you can use a VPN to access um, some certain videos that are only available in the United States on Prime. Okay, my thoughts about the documentary. Number one, I am, you guys know, I am taken aback to hear from the horse's mouth, to hear from Jill about what she went through over the past five, seven years with her father specifically. It's clear that he's made a firm stance <laughs> that he's not going back on. I mean, the Jim Bob that we saw on the TLC show 
was one who came off as very loving and even willing to take into consideration that he may not always be right and he needs to make um, adjustments in how he's behaving. But what we're hearing from Jill and obviously all the information that's come out about Josh has led me to believe that that's not who Jim Bob really is. The documentary further confirmed to me that it's really unfair, in my opinion, when fans say things like they believe that Jill and Derek are grifters just trying to make money off of everything that's going on around them. It feels to me like um, in the situation that Jill was brought up in, she has done her absolute best, her absolute damnedest to not take advantage of people or opportunities around her when she felt it wasn't right, it wasn't the right thing to do morally. And there were many opportunities in which she could have taken greater advantage of things that were going on around her. And I've seen others of her sisters, in my opinion, really taking advantage of bringing in that moolah and using their fame from TLC's 19 Kids and Counting to make it happen. It's the same for Derek. I don't see him as someone who's manipulating or using his wife. And there are other circumstances within the Duggar family where I see that fame has become the main catapult of even a relationship coming together. You know, um, like with Jeremy, for example, just my opinion, um, I do believe that one of the reasons he went after Ginger was for the idea that it would bring fame and fortune into his life. What we see with Derek is someone who was willing to work really hard, work his butt off. He was working on missionary trips. Not all of us agree um, with the philosophy of going on mission trips, but I will say flat out, um, as someone who's lived abroad, it's not easy to do trips like that. You're living in circumstances that are not ideal. Things that are available in the United States easily are not available where Derek and Jill were living down in South America. Things like air conditioning, access to stores, medical care. It's not easy to do a job like that. And it was something that he wanted to do with his life. Once that was pretty much taken away from him because of the contract that I guess Jill had signed with her father, he didn't go after getting a ton of money from, um, I don't know, Jim Bob, whoever else. What he did is he went to school. He went to law school and carved out a career for himself in an effort to be able to lead his family on a different path that strays away from the Duggar family and the compound in Arkansas. I'm really proud of Jill and Derek, and I'm sorry for them for everything that they've gone through over the past several years. I'm sorry that they've had, Jill has had to kind of come out as the black sheep of the family. I often feel angry when I feel like her siblings aren't supporting her enough publicly. But I will say that the documentary gave me an idea that the siblings may be in a situation where they have certain legal responsibilities or they're under contract with whoever. Maybe it's their father. I'm not really sure what's going on. And it would make them hesitant to say and do certain things publicly. It also makes sense to me that on several levels, Everybody in that family is going to be different and certain siblings are just not going to have the mental fortitude to constantly come forward and speak publicly about what happened to them years ago and their feelings about supporting this person or that person within the family. One thing about the Duggar family, ugh, this is an issue that I think we can see within these quiverful families is that because there are so many siblings, there are so many children that Jim Bob and Michelle had, there are so many needs. There are so many opinions. There are so many um, outlooks that need to be considered when you're making decisions about going forward and doing something as a family or talking about your sibling or talking about a parent because there are grandchildren's feelings to consider. There are the lives of multiple people who may be affected by whatever you put out there into the universe. So I think it's really difficult. It's a, it's a really difficult tightrope to walk. What I saw in this documentary is that Jill has a real love and respect for her family and for her parents that maybe I wasn't expecting. I, I think what I'm seeing is that even though she acknowledges that things that were done are wrong, 
could have been done in a much better way, that things that are being done right now are not how she wants to raise her family, even though she can acknowledge that, she also feels a deep sense of wanting things to be positive between herself, her parents, and the rest of her family. She doesn't want it to be like this. She doesn't want to live forever completely consumed about what happened with Josh or what happened with the TLC contract. She wants to move forward. They love and care about the Duggar side of the family, but they've had to erect boundaries and they've done a good job of that. I'm really proud of them. I just can't trust enough how proud I am. It's not perfect. Um, everything they say and do is not going to be perfect, but I'm proud for how far they've come, the bravery that they've shown, and just love Jill. Um, she is definitely making a mark on the world in her own way by standing up and being the best version of herself that she can be. Number two, one of the biggest issues brought forward by this documentary is that the Duggars were not an island unto themselves. There were many other families, many other victims, many other children who were and are suffering because of the doctrine of the IBLP. It's very easy for someone like me to become overly interested and obsessed <laughs> with the Duggar family as I have over the past year um, since the trial took place. But there is a whole other facet to what's going on. There are people who are not celebrities, who don't have the fame, who aren't showing up on the covers of tabloids, who have a lot of really hard things going on in their family because of Bill Gothard, because of being brought into the IBLP because their parents loved the TLC 19 Kids and Counting show. So the ramifications of what happened with the show and the Duggar family, it rings throughout this community. And the documentary brings that to the forefront. One thing I love about the documentary is that I've had many people comment on my videos and say I was never interested in this topic before, even during the trial. I didn't care about it. Now that I've seen the documentary, I'm going down the rabbit hole. Yay! That's really, it's great to bring people who didn't care about any of this before into the fold of people who are trying to learn about it and want to help and do better, right? So the documentary did a good job of that, even though many people who have been in, entranced by the story have said that the documentary didn't go for, far enough or didn't deep dive enough. I think it did a good job, especially for people who are newly getting invested in what happened with the IBLP. Lastly, I want to address what Jim Bob and Michelle put out on their social media, the DuggarFamily.com in response to the docuseries. The statement from Jim Bob and Michelle reads like this. A note from Jim Bob and Michelle, June 1st, 2023. The recent documentary that talks about our family is sad because in it we see the media and those with ill intentions hurting people we love. Like other families, ours too has experienced the joys and heartbreaks of life just in a very public format. <clears throat> Last night, I think this was one of the statements that made me feel really sad for Jim Bob and Michelle because it's true. Many of you out there, one of the reasons that you watched the TLC show, and I'm the same with you, is that you got some form of comfort from watching a family that seemed so stable and wholesome living and loving together in a very seemingly positive way. There was a lot of turmoil in my family growing up. And many of you are aware, I've dealt with being in and out of the hospital all throughout my childhood and in my young adulthood. And I actually remember watching um, TLC and the Duggar family show when I was in a hospital bed preparing for surgery. There was something about thinking that life could be so simple, um, that things could look so put together and a family could love each other unconditionally and in this kind of completely wholesome way. But it was TV. 
and we've learned that the reality show wasn't reality. I want to give Jim Bob and Michelle and everyone who appeared on that show some level of grace because it's true that every family experiences joy and heartbreak in their lives. No one is perfect. There is no black and white, good and evil. Michelle and Jim Bob are just human beings, as is everyone who appeared on the show. So who am I to hold them to a standard that's unattainable for anyone just because that's how the show was formatted for TLC. Jim Bob and Michelle go on to say, this documentary paints so much and so many in a derogatory and sensationalized way because sadly, that's the direction of entertainment these days. <clears throat> I'm not sure who wrote this note to us. Um, we know that Jim Bob and Michelle have people who help with their social media. So I can't be 100% sure that this is that this document is really their words. But I think this is their way of kind of taking a dig at um, any other show that's out there on TV. We know that they say they don't watch TV and kind of saying that their show was wholesome and friendly and positive. And yeah, I mean, it's really hard to read a statement like that because it's bullshit. It's total bullshit. And this is where we really see that Michelle and Jim Bob are still trying to live kind of in a fantasy. They want to believe that what they did, how they lived, everything that they did was the absolute best. And that's just not true. It's been proven. It's proven by what happened with Josh. It's proven, proven by the hurt that your daughters have gone through and the fact that you're disconnected with the ones who were hurt the most. It's proven that there is a lot of growth that your family needs to do. There's change that needs to happen. There are things that are wrong with the doctrine you lived by from the IBLP. It's simply been proven. And it's up to Jim Bob and Michelle to acknowledge that. They must acknowledge it on a personal level and they should be acknowledging it on a public level as well. Because as we saw in this documentary, there are kids and families out there who are hurting because of their involvement with the IBLP and Bill Gothard. And they looked to families like the Duggars as a role model. If Michelle and Jim Bob are able to say, yes, publicly, we've made a lot of mistakes. Publicly, we denounce Bill Gothard and the doctrine of the IBLP. It worked for us in certain ways, but in many ways, as you can see, it did not. And we're here to acknowledge that that's the truth. It would help a lot of people. Jim Bob and Michelle go on to say, we have always believed that the best chance to repair damaged relationships or to reconcile differences is through love in a private setting. If that was true, then why would Jim Bob and Michelle make Jessa and Jill, who are about the ages of 19 or 19 and 20, go on the Megan Kelly show to publicly defend their older brother who had essayed them when they were little children. They have not solved all of their issues through love in a private setting. When it behooved them, they have gone very public and pushed people around them to go public to support their son and their family when they decided it was worthy enough of their attention. But now that someone like Jill feels it's worthy enough to speak out, they're not gonna support that. That's called being selfish. That's called being completely inflexible and not understanding that the world doesn't revolve around you. There are other people out there who have endured pain because of your choices. And you would be a better person if you could only acknowledge that and show a little bit of empathy for the people who are dealing 
with consequences of your actions and the actions of your son. Michelle and Jim Bob said, we love every member of our family. It makes me question what their version of love is because they are not supporting either physically or emotionally their daughter, Jill. Is that love? I mean, is love only present when you can fully control that person? That's the question I have. The statement reads, and we will continue to do all we can to have a good relationship with each one. Through both the triumphs and the trials, we have clung to our faith all the more. In my own life, faith has been very important. There have been a lot of trials and a lot of triumphs, and I'm sure many of you have been there as well. And I support whatever helps you be the best person, the best version of yourself that you can be, whatever gets you to that point. I'm sad for Jim, Bob, and Michelle that they're using their faith to cover up for the fact that their child, Jill Duggar Dillard, has a broken heart over everything that's happened to her as a result of Josh's actions and then the decisions that her parents made to do everything they could to cover up for their son. Jim and Michelle end their statement by saying, they've discovered that through the love and grace of Jesus, we find strength, comfort, and purpose. So again, um, so again, what I see in this statement from Jim, Bob, and Michelle is basically um, an indication that they're going to be okay. They've got faith. They've got Jesus. They have strength and comfort. They'll be okay. Jill, all these other people, maybe you need to get a little more faith. Maybe you need to try a little harder. I feel so sad, specifically for Michelle. I do believe that there was a time in which Jim, Bob, and Michelle thought that they were doing the absolute best for their children, and they have entered a place in their lives where they are unwilling and unable to move out of a box they put themselves into. And their children and the children in their community are suffering because of it. My biggest prayer at the end of all of this is that I've learned something from the Duggar show and from the documentary. I hope that when the time comes for me as a parent to step out of my own box and be there for my children the way that they need me to be, not the way that I want it to be, I hope and pray that I will have the strength to do that because in my opinion, that's one of the most important parts of being a parent is not just being there when it's easy, but being there when it's the hardest of all. Thank you for being here with me. You guys are amazing. We've gone through four episodes of the Duggar documentary. We've talked about the response from Jim, Bob, and Michelle. I want to hear from you. Please look forward um, to to future videos in which I will be going live so we can chat back and forth. I'll be also, I will also be making a video that's doing some more deep dives into issues that were brought up in the documentary. And lastly, there will for sure be a video in which I go over the many comments you guys have left for me. I'm hoping to have some kind of guest up here in this video to chat with me and respond to many of the questions and comments you guys left on my videos about the docuseries. Thank you so much for being here with me. I'm so glad that we got to spend this time together. I hope that you'll join me again soon when it's time to head down another rabbit hole.